Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And thank you for waiting so patiently. I nearly thought that I wouldn't make it. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. Actually, I'm going to tell the little ones. So big ones, I want you to close your ears. All the big ones, close your ears. This is just for the little ones. Little ones, in order to get here, I was very naughty. You know what naughty is? Yes, you know what naughty is. You know what naughty is. Yes. I was very naughty because all the big trucks were parked, well, they were parked because they weren't moving. Did you hear that? Okay. Parents, you can unclose your ears. <laughs> so I'm here with you. I came down a steep hill when it said, do a turn do an, uh, 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 a sharp right turn and then it took me down a steep hill and I was quite petrified going down the hill because I couldn't see the bottom of it but I am here and I'm really delighted to be here with you thank you again for your patience but thank you especially that you have prepared your church so beautifully for your service of Christmas Eve let's just be silent for a moment And in our silence, let us remember the God whom we celebrate, the God whom we worship, the God who came to us, Emmanuel, God with us, God incarnate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Savior of the world. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You pled for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now as we have said we are sorry, I believe we're going to light the Christmas candle. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So we're going to light the Christmas candle and I have a prayer for that. Yes, who's good? Can we have a little one to come up and light it? Can we have a... Thank you. So as the candle is lit, there is a special prayer that we say. Eternal God who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth 
to see the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our prayer, which is our collect. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Savior and our eternal God. Amen. We now have our readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the travelling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel before the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day, in the city of David, a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth, the thoughts, the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to God who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Can I say thank you again for all the preparation and work that has gone into decorating the church and preparing for Christmas. I thought for our sermon, we could begin to think about the characters, the characters who were very much a part of the Christmas story. So first of all, we have Mary. And I want to think of us to think of Mary not as a very mature woman, but a young girl. And so to the younger ones here, she was really like a big sister. A big sister, perhaps just out of school and very much learning about life. And imagine what happens to her because suddenly she is met by someone and I'm hoping the young ones are like when you talk to me. So I'm hoping one of the young ones is going to tell me who was it that appeared to Mary? Yes. An angel. And I think that that would have been pretty scary. You're wandering around the house doing the dusting or getting the clothes ready for washing and suddenly an angel an angel is not someone that we see every day. So there is not a, oh, hi there. And you get on about your business. There's a, oh, wow. What's that? You are scared. Mary was scared. And the angel said, do not be afraid. Now just imagine what are the things that scares us. One of the things that scared me coming here this evening is that I wouldn't get here because of the long queue of trucks. And so whatever it is that we are afraid of, we too need to hear an angel's voice, God's voice in effect, saying to us, do not be afraid. What are the things that scares you? What do you think? What scares you? Or what, what do you think might, what do you think might, I'll come back to you. What do you think might scare you? Thinking about it? What do you think? Well, maybe we, should we ask one of the adults? Yes. What are the things that scares you? Yeah, the darkness, no light. And you've got to walk in that darkness. That can be pretty scary. I went to a church earlier on in the week 
and uh, um, I turned up at the wrong church. And so the lights are on the outside and the church is set amongst lots of graves. So I pulled up and I'm thinking, where is everyone? And I get out and they pushed on the church door and the church door is locked. And I'm thinking, that's very strange. I went back, I looked at my paper. Yes, it says St. Mary. This says St. Mary, so I must be at St. Mary's. Where is everyone? Maybe the time is wrong. So I walk around the side and that door is locked. And then I looked around me and I thought, oh, this doesn't feel comfortable. I want to get back into my car quickly. Whenever we feel scared, we need to hear God's voice say, do not be afraid. And when God tells us not to be afraid, the reason he does not want us to be afraid is because... What is this? The light. The light of Christ is here with us, shining in the darkness of fear to help us to keep going. So we have Mary, a young girl who is frightened by the presence of an angel. The angel says, do not be afraid. If you are no longer afraid, then it allows you to listen. It allows you to hear what is being said. If on the other hand you are really, really scared, then nothing will make sense and you will just be so frightened that you can't hear anything. So maybe the next time that you and I are a little bit scared, a little bit frightened, we might just pause and breathe and say a little prayer. A little prayer like, Lord Jesus, you are the light. Come to us now. Come to me now so that I may not be afraid. Help me to know that you are here with me. So we have Mary and of course there is Joseph. And when Joseph is told that Mary was going to have a baby, do you think Joseph was very happy? No. Do you think he would have been happy? Oh, why? Why do you think he would be happy? I know, and that is a darn good reason to be happy. Yes, he's having a baby. You get that, guys? You're having a baby, so just be happy that you're having a baby. But on this occasion, I'm afraid Joseph was not very pleased. And adults, for the sake of the children, I will just say that he was not very pleased because Joseph would have, been, would have preferred to have been told first. <laughs> he was being told second and he didn't really like that. He thought, I should have been told that, not her. But anyway, he was still going to have a baby whether he was told first or not. And, uh, and so Joseph again obediently eventually decided that, okay, the baby is here. I had better be happy about it. And he began to make plans. The plans that he made for Mary was interrupted. It was interrupted because at that time they were told that there would be a special thing happening and everybody had to go and have their names what is it called again? Census. A census, that's right. A special census is going to be taken. Is it every 10 years we do that here? Every 10 years we do that here. I don't know how often they did it back then, but it was time for a census. So it meant a long journey. And of course, there is no uh, Porsche or BMWs or uh, VWs, what am I talking about? Cars, that's right. There are no cars for comfortable driving. Instead, they are left with a donkey, a donkey. And that must have been a very bumpy ride. Uphill, downhill, round corners and bends. And Mary is now really, really pregnant, very uncomfortable. 
and she is ready to have the baby. She's ready to have the baby. And I'm sure that she would have loved a beautiful, comfortable house, a bed, all the, all the kind of comfort things that you can think of. But instead, at each knock of the door, there is, I'm sorry, there is no room. Perhaps a little bit like the, those sitting in their vans are feeling at the moment. Sorry, you can't go, you can't leave. You have to do a test. Sorry, we're not ready. There is not enough people to help. Sorry, you can't leave. I heard people on the news last night saying, but my children are waiting. I've got the money to buy the shopping for Christmas and I'm not going to get there. So you begin to try and stand in the shoe of what Mary and Joseph must have felt like. And Joseph being upset initially that he wasn't told first, and now he can't even provide Mary with a comfortable home to have her baby in. So that must have been very upsetting for Joseph. We often uh, focus on Mary, but I think Joseph would have been deeply hurt by the fact that he couldn't provide somewhere safe and warm for Mary and for their first child to be born. So we have Mary, we have Joseph, we have those, the innkeepers, various innkeepers who are saying, no, no, go away, no room. And then finally, one of them says, actually, there's a room out back. But the room out back turns out to be a what? What is the place where, where the, they've Stable. told them to go? Little ones, you can shout out the answer. Stable. Stable, that's right. And you've got a mop of stable here. A lot of work must have gone into this. I rather like it. A stable, it looks warm. The light makes it warm and inviting. And I bet for Mary and Joseph, they must have thought, at last, at last. So, I need some help. I need two people to come up. One is going to take Joseph, because Joseph has to check it out first. Who's going to take Joseph and put J Joseph in the crib? Can somebody come and take Joseph and put Joseph in for me, please? You're not allowed to be shy. You're not allowed to be shy. And someone else will have to be getting ready now for Mary. So Joseph is going to have a little look around, make sure it is safe, and then he's going to stand guard. Well done. Thank you. And of course there's Mary. Mary is ready to have a baby. Who's going to take Mary for me, please? Thank you. What's your name? Emily. Thank you. So there is Mary. And Mary and Joseph, they're there and they are ready. And finally, we are told that she gave birth. She gave birth to the infant child and wrapped him in swaddling clothes or cloths. I would imagine that they didn't have any baby wear. You look in the supermarket now and every time you go in, and if you're a grandparent like me, then you think, oh, that's so pretty, that's so pretty. But they didn't have that. All they had was little bits of cloth that they wrapped the baby Jesus. Who's going to put baby Jesus in for me? Can you put baby Jesus in? And there is something there for baby Jesus to be placed in. Thank you. So the main characters are there. The infant child, Emmanuel, Jesus, God with us, comes and is born in a manger. And what is exceptional about this child being born and being there and the whole story is that suddenly others are being told they did not have uh, mobile phones. We were talking on the mobile phone. They did not have mobile phones. They did not have WhatsApp. What other things do you send messages on? 
Speak louder. WhatsApp. WhatsApp. What else? Text. Yeah. A text. Text. Facebook. E. What is that? eBay. eBay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Transactions are done that way. Facebook. Twitter. What else? Messenger. They didn't have any of those things and yet we are told that shepherds, soon after, shepherds were told, shepherds were told that something special had happened. And the words of the shepherds, let me just read what the shepherds said. They said, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. Now we don't have any more uh, characters to put in there, but the shepherds came. The shepherds came. Oh, there they are over here. Okay. The shepherds are over here. We'll probably leave them there for the time being. The shepherds are there. No newborn uh, mother who have just given birth want to have lots of shepherds. I don't think so. But anyway, the shepherds came. They wanted to see what was happening. So perhaps it's a good idea that they're there. It gives Mary a little bit of privacy. <laughs> um, but the shepherds came and they saw and then they went back. We're told that they returned. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. So not only did the shepherds go and see for themselves, but the shepherds decided to go and tell others about this amazing thing that they have seen. And that reminds me about us. What do we do when we have had an amazing experience? You know, you go somewhere. Let's imagine a new supermarket has been put up and you've been there, or a new restaurant. I know we're in pandemic times and we can't do all those things, but just think about it. Before we had the pandemic, when you had experienced something really wonderful, what do you do? Adults, this is your turn. You've experienced something wonderful, what do you do? You tell other people. It's a natural thing to do. Guess what? You pick up the phone or whatever else. Guess where I have been. Guess what I have seen. And I want to say to us that you and I need to do exactly that. When we have met with Christ, when we have been touched by God, when we have been spoken to by the angels, we too, like the shepherds, need to go and tell others. That is what we are about. That's an important part of what we need to do, to go and tell. It is not something to keep to ourselves. A lot of people have been very unhappy. On the Friday, on the Friday, I went out and did a big shop thinking there will be 13 of us on Christmas Day. But on Christmas Day, there is only going to be two of us. My family won't be able to come and join me because of being in tier four. And that's a little bit sad. But what makes me move from being sad to a place of, Rose, this is your reality. And this is other people's reality. So don't, don't mope around. Don't mope around. What is Christmas really about? And you see, Christmas is really about the Christ child. Christmas is about the peace that the Christ child brings to humanity. And so while we're stuffing all the Christmas puddings and the... What's your favorite dish at Christmas? <clears throat> what is it? What do you like to eat at Christmas? Turkey. The turkey. Oh, yes. So if, all you, if, if, if you think Christmas is only about the turkey, then we will forget 
that it is about the Christ child. So although I won't have uh, 13 at the table, and there will only be two at the table, I will perhaps, well not perhaps, I will take some food to my neighbor, knock on the door and leave a uh, good distance, because we can't have someone else in the house from a different uh, bubble. But Christmas is not about the presents that we unwrap. Christmas is not about who has the largest turkey. Christmas is not about who has got... Do they still do intenders? Intenders? Nintenders? You can see I'm out of, yeah. out of fashion with all these things. Do they still do that? Yes. Yeah? But Christmas is not all about those things. Christmas, first and foremost, is about the child Jesus who comes to us as the light of the world. That light needs to shine in our hearts. That light needs to give a, a, a brightness so that when others see us, they can catch a glimpse of the joy of Christ that lives within us. Comfort and joy, tidings of comfort and joy. So in spite of the fact that the Christmas we're having is not the Christmas we planned, we must still know that Christmas is about the light of Christ coming into the world, dwelling in our hearts, dwelling in our lives, dwelling also in our homes, our communities. And you and I are the shepherds. You and I are the shepherds. Come. Let us see this thing which has come to pass. Come and see for yourself. Go and tell the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. So we're going to bless the crib. And as part of the blessing of the crib, to say a special prayer. So we keep a moment's silence. And in the silence, let us pray that God our Father will bless this scrib and that all who worship his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, may come to share his life in glory. God our Father, on this night your Son Jesus Christ was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary for us and for our salvation. Bless this crib which we have prepared to celebrate that holy birth. May all who see it be strengthened in faith as they are reminded of your presence with us. And may they receive the fullness of life that your son came to bring, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. To you, O Christ, word of the Father, we offer our lowly prayers and humble thanks for love of our human race. You most wonderfully chose to be born of Mary and to make our nature as never more to lay it by, so that we might be born again by your Spirit and restored in the image of God, to whom one blessed Trinity be given all honor, might, majesty, and power, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we stand to affirm our faith. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, 
who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer one another the sign of peace in a COVID friendly way. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embrace us as your children, and welcome us as the in Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him, whose body is the bread of At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of me. His blood is shed for As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Before we pray the Lord's Prayer, let's just have a moment where we offer up in the silence of our hearts the prayers that we have brought this day. For the families we will not see in France. For those who are hospitalized, for those experiencing illness of any sort, for those on either side of the border, both here in Dover or on mainland Europe who are unable to get back to their friends and family. And for ourselves, O oh God, give us a deep joy a joy that overflows, a joy that speaks of your love and your light, a joy that enables us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. No. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you day by day. Amen. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless you and fill you with lots of joy always. Amen. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless you and fill you with peace and joy always. given for you. This is a body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and bring God to your praise and glory. Amen. So may the joy of the angels, the perseverance of the wise men, the delight of the shepherds, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love, pray and care for this day and always. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ.